Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Wednesday. It is time for our daily devotion, so I want to invite you to come and join me. Let's settle in together and take a little bit of time just to read God's Word, hear a devotion for today, and do some time of reflect, reflecting and praying on these. It's a beautiful Wednesday here. So... Thank you all yesterday for our, um, being able to just uh, be with us. As uh, uh, We had a, a rerun yesterday. We'll probably have a rerun tomorrow as well with uh, Allie being out on medical leave. Um, and I've got some things that uh, kind of periodically come up. And so um, we'll have to do a couple of reruns here and there, but don't anticipate doing that very often at all, just so you know. But thank you, Linda. One of my favorite Tommy Bahama shirts that I own. <laughs> morning, Uncle Bill. Hello, Barb. Hi, Chris. Good morning to both of you. Glad you are here. Morning, Mr. Dunbar. Good to see you. So, as you find your Bibles, we're going to be reading out of the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 14. We're going to read two sections in Mark 14. The first is going to come at verses 27 to 31, where it predicts Peter's denial. And then we're actually going to read verses 66 to the end of the chapter, where Peter actually does deny Jesus. So we're going to look at first the prediction and then the actual denial. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Verses 27 to 31, 66 to 72. As a side note, if you're someone who watches this later on, don't forget to also leave a quick comment and say hello. I would appreciate you doing that. All right, so here is our prayer of illumination. Oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. So Mark chapter 14, verses 27 to 31, and then 66 to 72. So Peter's denial foretold. And Jesus said to his disciples, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to Jesus, Even though all fall away, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. And then picking up in verse 66, Peter denies Jesus. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the female servants of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And when he went into the forecourt, then the cock crowed, and the female servant, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and you talk like one. But Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for
for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Our devotion writer today is Andrew Gad. Andrew is from England. His focus verse is verse 72. Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Here is Andrew's devotion. He said, I recently read the autobiography of a now departed saint, pastor, author, and international speaker. As I read, I was not only impressed by his successes, but also impressed by his honesty about his failings. He acknowledged his many mistakes caused by inexperience, pride, or arrogance. Reviewing his life, he presented the bad as well as the good. Peter denied Jesus three times despite having insisted that he would never do that. If I were Peter, I would have made sure that no one wrote down my failings. If I were to write the story of my life, it would be a sanitized, airbrushed masterpiece charting the highs of my association with Jesus and his ministry. When people are honest about their fears and their failings, we can share in their journeys to a depth that is not possible if they present only the good parts of their lives. Vulnerability, sometimes considered a weakness, is actually a strength. Vulnerability is bravery. Authenticity is connection. I am immensely thankful that the gospel writers captured the embarrassing failings of the disciples as well as their successes. In the gospels, we see the arguments, doubts, denials, and betrayals. In these accounts, we can see ourselves. The thought for the day is, with God's help, I will be vulnerable, sharing my whole self with others. I think, uh, if anything, in um, the Christian context of today, particularly in our country, that is something that um, our Christian community really needs to learn to be better at. Maybe the reason people don't like us and think we are judgmental is because we aren't really all that authentic about our own kind. And he has given back this ministry by which he is called to serve all of God's sheep. And he becomes the, the first uh, um, leader of the church in, in Jerusalem. And so you think about what it means for us to be a people who are called back to. Uh, there's some, in, in the journey through the, the Holy Land, you go to these places. Uh, in Jerusalem, there is the church of, uh, what's called the Church of Peter in Galliantu. Uh, Galliantu is the church of the, the rooster. And so it is the place that marks where supposedly Peter denies Jesus three times. That's the church there. And then you go up onto the shore uh, near Tabga, um, and the shores there uh, up on the Galilee, and you go to the, chief, uh, the Church of Peter's Primacy, and that's the church on the seashore that marks where Jesus reinstates Peter. All of us are part of this story. All of us are people who need to, to be able to recognize the moments where we have failed and share those moments with other people, but in that also to be able to share how God has renewed us, reclaimed us, and created something different. You know, how we've learned through those moments and how we've leaned into our faith in God's presence. Because really I think that's when people will begin to, to actually pick up on the value of what it means to have a relationship with God. It isn't about our judgments but rather it's about how we have been judged by God and how we have been redeemed by God. And when we can tell those stories to other people, uh, I, I think our relationship uh, with them and, and our representation of who God is uh, might, might change dramatically um, and might be a better way in which we, we talk about who God is in this world. So think about... Um, what it is that you share out of your life, and it's not that it's not that it's your confessional, and it's not that it's a, 
it's a woe is me. It's it's not any of those things, but but it, maybe it's just an honest presentation of the fact that you know I'm broken just like anybody else. But God's grace is 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 more powerful in, than than my brokenness, and how we share that and let people see that. So let's take a moment to think about what it means for us to be people who who recognize our own failings, are, are willing to be vulnerable in those, but also recognize the power and the strength that we've been given in the spirit that comes to renew. So dear Lord, forgive us of our failings. We ask that you help us to be brave and vulnerable, strong and authentic as we take you to the world around us. So we pray this in Christ. Amen. All right, friends, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate all of you being here for our our daily devotion. It's a joy to spend this time with you. Um, Tomorrow will probably be a rerun, just to let you know. Um, But just in case, uh, if I can figure out something differently, I'll figure it out and maybe try to go through the devotion and record it and then maybe post it or something like that. But one way or the other, we'll have a devotion time tomorrow. Come and join. Uh, Quickly, again, remind you, if you watch this later today, don't forget, leave a quick comment and say hello. I would appreciate you doing that. Feel free to share this on your own Facebook page. And also, take a moment to pray for one another. I'm praying for you. I invite you to pray for me. God's peace and grace be with you on the rest of this day. Thanks for being here, friends. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.